Joe Wagner might not. I got it. Am I what?
Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church. I invite you to stand and sing with us. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise mine Ebenezer Hither by thy help I come And I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home. Jesus saw me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debt daily I am constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Please have a seat. Good morning, everybody. They're not really sure it's a good morning. I don't know. But uh, I know that it's a good morning because here we're all together at church. And we're going to have a great day today, aren't we? All right. That's what, that's what we like to hear. We have moved through graduation season. We got all our kids graduated and moved on. And now we move into the summer vacation and busy summer season. Here we are. Already it's the first Sunday in June. Believe it or not, the sixth month of the year. It's crazy how fast time flies, but we are glad each and every one of you are here today. If you're sitting here today, you have a lot to be thankful for, and uh, I try to remind myself of that every, every single day. But uh, we are going to say a blessing, and uh, after the blessing, we are going to greet each other. And if you see somebody around you that you don't normally see, somebody that you haven't seen in a while, or somebody that looks like they need a hug or a handshake or a, a, a positive word or a word of encouragement, make sure to do that. We want people to walk in this church and feel good about their time here. We want them to feel like they're at home. And we want them to return each and every week. Nothing better than seeing the numbers grow. And I know that our numbers are going to continue to grow because we have so many young people involved in our church. So we don't have to worry about the old dying church here because we are, we are alive and well due to our leadership here. So... Let's say a blessing, and uh, we welcome you to First Baptist Church, especially if this is your first time, whether you're online or uh, on the Facebook or the YouTube, whatever it is. We're glad you're with us listening in today. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer and then greet each other around us, and we're going to have Andre get back into the worship service. It's always good to have his lovely wife with us today as well when she comes and sings along with us. It's good to have her. So let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day, and I thank you so much for the church we have and the body of believers that we have and the families that we have and the people that we have so willing to volunteer. And on a week coming up with Vacation Bible School, thank you for the people that have stepped up to lead this effort. Thank you for the people that have stepped up to volunteer their time and their energy this week. We ask your hand and your blessing on all of the families and in kids that are going to be here this week in advance. We know, that, uh, we know that you're going to do great things. We don't know what they are, what they look like, but we know with the more than 100 kids that we have coming this week that, that there's going to be seeds planted, there's going to be hopefully prayers answered, and uh, there's going to be people moving closer to you and maybe people to make a decision to follow you in their lives. And we thank you for that that you give us the opportunity to uh, minister to kids in our community. We ask you to bless Brother Joe as he brings a message to us today, and Andre as he leads us in worship. And we ask for your protection and blessing on all those that are here, and uh, we thank you for the good things you've done for us, the big things, the little things, the things we know about, 
and especially the things we don't know about, we don't see and that we don't even know are coming yet. Lord, we thank you in advance for those things. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's greet each other. Defender
sees the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am saved. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you against me for Jesus there's nothing impossible for you when all I see are the ashes you see the can stand against I am weary. 
longing for your voice gentle whisper in the noise father tell me everything's all right your power your strongholds, a king of heaven, when you speak, mountains move, I believe there will be breakthrough, Overcomer 
pray with me? Lord, we pray for breakthrough today. Here in this church, here in this town, and in this nation of yours. We ask for your provision here. We ask for your hand, your blessing. We ask that you will start and cause a revival here. We ask that you will give your people confidence and courage to go out and tell people about Jesus, to tell them your name, Lord. We ask that you'll move here today in this room, prepare everyone to receive from you today, Lord, and we ask that as Joe comes, give him your word, give him the boldness to preach it unfiltered. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. We got any four years old through fourth grade, we've got uh, Children's Church for you. You can follow right out this door. Kids are going to go up there and have a good time. All right, how are we doing today? Everybody good? Is everybody awake? All right, so here's where we are. We're in the book of Galatians. I'll invite you to turn there. If you got your Bible, turn to Galatians. Um, we're, if, you don't, if you didn't bring a Bible, there should be one right there in front of you. You can grab that one. If you don't own a Bible, take that one. That's our gift to you. We'll replace that one with another. Let me kind of tell you where we're at here today. So we've been walking through the book of Galatians, and really, um, mostly what we do is walk through books of the Bible, because we don't care that much about what Joe says, but we do want to know what God says. Joe doesn't have very many deep thoughts. You follow me around for a day, you find that out. But God has all kinds of stuff he wants us to know, so we kind of just walk through books of the Bible. So we've been walking through this book of Galatians, we're, this is actually our last sermon. We're going to be starting in chapter 6. We'll look at verse 7 in just a minute. Let me kind of remind you. The book of Galatians was written by the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And the book is primarily about what Christianity is and what Christianity is not. Primar and, and even probably if you want to drill down a little bit more, it's really about what the gospel is and what the gospel is not. Right? And so... What he basically says is this, is that it's, Christianity is not about mora um, morality, right? It's, it's, it's not trying to be a good person, because here's what we know, good people still go to hell, all right? In other words, there's a lot of people that bust hell open that they're surprised, because here's the thing, they never jaywalked, they never hit their you know, their thumb with a hammer and said a dirty word, but they ended up in hell. And the reason that happened was because they didn't know Jesus. They were good people. So, so again, it's not about being moral, right? It's also not about tradition. It's not committing yourself to a teacher, right? It's not about culture. It's not about being an American or being Jewish, it's, it's not about any of that, right? Uh, Christianity, more than anything, is about Jesus. And it's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Right? And so uh, that's really at the heart of the argument here in Galatians, is, is just that Jesus is God and that he has come to love and to save us and uh, to, to transform us, to heal us, and to have a relationship with us. And that he loves us, and so in turn we should love and trust him back. That's, so that's the idea, uh, that's really the whole Christian life, is we love and trust him, he loves, him, he loves us, and, and, and in the process we get made into his image. And so that's what's going on, that's the heart of Christianity. Now here's what's going to happen this week. So if you look at verse 7, we're going to start there in just a second. He's going to talk about a basic principle here that really undergirds everything that he's already been saying to us. And it's this. Um, it's the, the basic principle of sowing and reaping. All right? And we, we kind of all believe this because it's, well, this is, in a lot of ways, Ducoin is a, a farming community. We got farmers here. And around, there's farmers all over the place around here. And, and what we're going to see, we're going to learn truth that God has really woven into the, the fabric of creation, basically. And, and it's a truth that's really self-evident. And, and you'll all know this. 
And, and it's really the way, a lot of times, how life works. So, so let me ask you, how many of you are gardeners or, or farmers? Or I learned a big word, botanist. Any, uh, yeah? Any botanists here? Right? I, and I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't really like it. And here's the why, because I don't have a green thumb. I don't know if you've got a, a lot of you do, because I've eaten your produce. It's good. Um, yeah, I, I actually have a, I don't know, maybe a brown thumb. I don't know, instead of green. I, I walk by something and it kills it. And you go, I, no, nah, I think you're too hard on yourself. No, go by my house. Look at the bushes. I walked past them and they all died. So it's, it's, it's really true. I, I kill everything I touch uh, plant-wise. So, um, you know, but some of you are going to get this principle that we're going to look at. Now look at verse 7 because that's where we're going to start. He says this, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Now here's the deal. If I had in my pocket and I pull out an apple seed, Right? What are you going to expect if I put this in the ground that I'm going to grow? Am I going to grow? If I put this in the sound, I mean in the, sound, in the ground, am I going to get a pineapple? If I put that seed in the ground, am I going to get a big old nasty head of cabbage? No. What I'm going to get is this. What I'll get, if I sow an apple seed... What I'll get is first an apple tree, and then if I wait long enough, hopefully, I'm going to get what? An apple. And that's called the law of the harvest. Right? That's what he's talking about here. The basic principle is first you sow, and then you reap. Right? You sow, and then you reap. And that, that's basically what he's talking about here. And it's, it's like your whole life, your family, your friends, your school you attend, uh, your marriage, your church, your neighborhood, um, whatever you're involved in, there's a correlation of cause and effect in, in your life. I mean, it's just the truth. And so uh, what happens is you sow, then you reap. So here, number one is this. The very first thing is this. What we're going to see, number one, is you reap what you what? What you sow. Right? So, uh, in other words, if, if I sow law, I'm going to get law. I expect to get law. If I, if I sow nitpicking, what am I going to get? Nitpicking. Right? If, 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 I sow, uh, if I love people, what should I expect in return? People love you. Right? Uh, if, if I encourage people, the odds are that, that there's going to be some encouraging going on. And the, 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 the point is this, that we reap what we sow. All right? Everybody follow? Pretty simple. Um, but here's the other part of that. It's not only uh, you reap what you sow, but you also reap where you sow, which is important. If you put all your energy into your marriage, you should expect some some uh, reaping there. If you put your time and energy into your kids, you should expect some there. If you put all of your sowing into your work, where are you gonna where are you gonna see a harvest? At work, but you might not see it in your home, right? So you're going to where you sow is where you reap. So if we're a Christian, and this is for you in here that are believers, I just want to say we got to look at our life and see where our priorities are. Amen? Thank you. If this is where your priorities come into play. Thank you for that, by the way. I like that. So let's think of this. Let's think of this. I'm going to give you some examples. Let's talk about this with our health. How about this? If all you eat is fried food, pizza, snicker bars, ice cream, Donuts, amen, uh, Diane. Donuts, cake, Doritos. What's going to happen? You're going to be happy. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> if you have poor nutrition, you might not see it at the very beginning, 
but it'll have its effect. Amen? Some of you know this, right? Um, and, and, and so think about this. You can neglect your relationships at, with your spouse or your friend or the Lord or your kids. And, and, and the point is this. It, it may seem to be functional for a while. You're putting it all in at work and none at home. But eventually it'll catch up. It's the law of, of, of sowing and reaping. Because you reap what you sow. And as Christian, that brings us back to our priorities. Where are our priorities? Now look at verse 8. Let me show you this. He says, for the one who sows to his own flesh will from his flesh reap corruption. And then he says, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So here's what he's saying. There's really only two kinds of seeds. Right? There's two kinds of seeds, and he's going to point that out. He says there's, there's two buckets. One bucket is basically full of seeds of the flesh. Now, in the NIV, if you, I don't know if you've got the NIV. In the NIV, it says your sinful nature instead of flesh, right? So what he's talking about there is sin. And what he's saying is you can put your hand in this bucket, the flesh bucket, and in that bucket, there are seeds of sin. And you can take and you can scatter those seeds everywhere you go. You can go in your marriage, and with your kids, um, in, in, in your home, in your church, in your neighborhood, everywhere you go, and you can get... Seeds out of that bucket of the flesh and spread them wherever that might be. And then he says this, but over here there's another bucket. And this bucket over here, he calls the spirit. Right? And in that bucket, there's seeds of life, of holiness, and joy. And you can put your hand in that bucket and, and you can spread those seeds throughout your life. And, and what will come of that um, is life. So there's two buckets, whatever bucket you put your hand in, whatever seed you take out and you scatter, right, that's what you're going to reap. That's what he says. Okay, are, we, are we following? Okay. And so here's what he says. He says, do not be deceived. God will not be mocked. You reap what you sow. So if you put your hand in the sin bucket again, and you sow it all over your life, you'll reap, the, the scripture says, corruption or death. And if you put your hand in the bucket of the Spirit of God and the things of God, and you put that throughout your life, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll reap life, right? And then here's what he's going to say. He's going to say, do not be deceived. Now, the word deceived is an interesting word. It's the word plano, which we get our word planet from. And the idea is the planets are just floating around in space, Right? They're going where they want. And, and the point is this. The idea is, the word deceived is to get off track, right? to get off the right track and wander from what the truth is. That's the word deceived. And, and it's, in a, it's in a tense that means this, that we continually allow ourselves to be that. In other words, and what he's saying here is don't let yourself continually be deceived. Put off track. Right, And he's writing to remember a group of people here in Galatia that have gotten deceived. And here's the deception. You want, now ready? Here's the deception that they've got, and so do a lot of us. Because sometimes Christians will think, well, if I sin, right? If, if I sin and I sow sin, nothing's going to happen. Nothing weird will happen. Right? If I sow folly, rebellion, wickedness, or whatever word you want to put there, if I do that, it doesn't matter. And what, what the Bible says and what Paul says here and what the Spirit's telling them to write is that's deception. That is deception. And sometimes people live under this idea for a very long time that I can go out and sin and it really doesn't matter. It won't affect me at all. And you know why? Why? Well, here, let me ask you this. When you sin, does it bear a harvest immediately? The answer to that question, by the way, is no. It, the same thing is if you plant a seed, does it immediately bear a harvest? How many know you got to wait? Right? The same thing here. Because just like a seed, you put it in the ground, and it takes a little, little bit to grow. And the same is with sin. Right? Sometimes you sow it and you have to wait for, for the, the effects to show up. 
And what he says is there are certain people who are walking around that'll say, you know, sin, eh, nothing happens. It's not any big deal, right? It doesn't matter. God doesn't care. God's not paying attention to what I'm doing. There's no cause and effect. There's no sowing and reaping. This isn't a big deal. I can do whatever I want, right? This isn't a problem. And what Paul says is that is deception. Are you hearing me? You're leading yourself off track. In Revelation chapter 12, it says that Satan is the great deceiver. And what he wants to do is jack your life up and tell you it doesn't matter what you do. Just go do whatever you want. There's no, there's no consequences, right? And that's what deception is, to get led off track. Are you following me? All right. So, we, again, deception is just being convinced basically, of the wrong thing and then going astray. In other words, what we do is we call righteousness sin and sin righteousness. Just getting off track. Right? That's deception. You say, well, you know, who would ever deceive me? I'm not going to let the great deceiver do it. Well, guess what? In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, it says this. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You know, Really, you don't even need the devil to deceive you. The Bible says that our own heart does it. You know that? You know what we call that? We call that rationalizing. Here's what we do. We'll say, you know what? I was born this way. I, I can do this. It doesn't matter what God's word says. I can do it because I was born like Or I've got an addiction. God says, don't do this. But no, I can't help it, God. I have an addiction. I have to do this. That is deception. That's deception. Our heart will do it to us. The devil will do it to us. And he says this. Paul says, don't be deceived. You know why? And he says why? Here, listen, this is important. He says, God is not what, y'all? God's not mocked. You hear that? God's not, what does that mean? God's not fooled. God is not outwitted. You can't fool God. You're never going to be able to stand for God. Well, I just had an addiction, God. That's my problem. I was, you, you made me this way. See, you can't outwit him. And, the, and you know what the literal Greek is for this word mocked? Here's what it means. It's to turn your nose up, literally, in the Greek. It's like, you're from Pickneyville. <laughs> oh, you're DeCoin. <clears throat> it means to sneer at, is what it means. To sneer at God thinking that you can violate his laws and get away with it. You know, sometimes I, I've talked to people... And they'll take the, the concept of grace, which is an awesome thing, and, and they'll run with it. And they'll say, thing, they'll, they'll say things like this, man, I'm forgiven. You know, um, I'm totally forgiven. My past, present, future sins are forgiven. Is that true, y'all? It is, isn't it? And they'll say, well, the cross accomplished everything. Um, you know, everything's been set aside. I'm good. I'm free and I'm breezy. I'm good. Right? And um, so I can do what I want because I'm under grace. Here, here's the thing. You can do what you want, but you don't get to choose your consequences. You don't get to choose the consequences. Right? And, and, and so what, what he's saying here is this. You can't mock God. You can't turn your nose at, and, and it, I, what's interesting about this, there's two ways this happens. In fact, when I was looking at this word, to mock, it also can mean ignore. You can't ignore God. You can't turn your nose up at him, and you can't, um, mock, you can't sneer at him. Sneer at him, and you can't ignore him. So both of them mean the same thing. So in other words, if you ignore God's word, you're basically sneering at him. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't do that, Joe. Well, if you ignore it, that's the same word, right? How many times in life have you done, I've, I've done this. How many times do you go, you know what? I know God says not to do that, 
but I'm going to do it anyways. Anybody ever done that? Or is it just the preacher? I know God's word says to do this, but I'm, I'm going to do this other thing. And what God says, that's mocking him. Right? That's looking at God and basically saying this, you're wrong, God, I'm right. I'm smarter than you are. I know better than you do. You're the liar, I'm the truth teller here, God. And that's mocking God. See, when God says no, we say yes. Now, let me, let me just give you some examples. I know we got single guys in here. If you're a single guy in here and you want a wife... But you spend all of your time, all of your sexual energy looking at porn, the sexual perversion. Here's what I'm going to tell you. There will be a harvest. Are you hearing me? What that'll do, it'll affect your marriage. That'll affect your wife. That'll affect your kids. That'll affect your life. And the scripture says, don't deceive yourself. Right? If you're married... And you got a spouse and you think that like gossiping about them, nitpicking, biting um, is going to lead to a, a fruitful marriage? Let me tell you, it's not. Bitterness never leads to love. Gossip never leads to love. Nagging never leads to love. It leads to death. Some of you in here got kids and, and listen, in your mind you're going, well, I, I, don't, I know God says, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child, but... Um, I'm not going to discipline my kids. God says discipline them, and you're like, nah, I don't know. Joe, you're getting into parenting. Don't say that. Listen to me. If you say it's, it's all just going to work out, I'll just, I'm going to leave it to God, but you don't listen to him, it's going to be a harvest. There's going to be a problem. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked. So, so here, here's what he says. He says to each and every one of us, there are two buckets. You choose what bucket you want to put your hand in and you get the seed and, you, and then you got to choose. Am I going to put this seed, the spirit seed in my life or am I going to put the flesh seed in my life, right? Am I going to sow love or am I going to sow anger? Am I going to sow joy or whining? Am I going to sow forgiveness or unforgiveness. And you know what he says here? This is what's interesting. He's talking to Christians and he's saying, you've got a choice to make in your life. Are you going to choose life? Are you going to choose death? I heard a story about a guy um, when I was studying for this, about an old man. He's like the wisest man in the village. He kind of was always right. These two boys, are younger guys are kind of ticked at him and they're like, we're going to show that old man up. And so they said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get a baby bird and we're going to stick it in our hand. And then we're going to ask him, is this bird alive or is he dead? And if he says alive, we're going to crush him and say, you're wrong. You ain't that smart. And if he, if he says dead, we're going to let it go and say, ha, huh, you're an idiot. So they catch the bird and they go to the old man and they say, all right, old man. What's in my hand? And he, he looked at their hand and he said, hmm, well, by the looks of the feathers outside your fingers, he says, I think you got a, a baby bird in your hand. They're like, okay. And then they say, okay, so is this bird alive, old man, or is he dead? And the old man thought for a second and they were chuckling. They were like, they, we got him now. We're going to make him look really stupid. And he said, no, he says to him, he goes, you know what? Boys, it really is your choice, isn't it? In your hand, you have death and you have life. You choose what you want. And the truth is, y'all, the same is is for all of us. By God's grace and by the Spirit of God, we can stick our hand in the Spirit bucket and sow seeds of joy, love, of forgiveness in our life. It's our choice. Now, let me say this. Some of you, I know what you're thinking. You're here and you're going, you know what, Joe? I tried what you said. It didn't work, right? 
And here's what I know. How many of you know it's frustrating to be a Christian sometimes? Because here's what. Many of us want to harvest the same day we plant. Can I get a win? Isn't that true? Right? And so what happens is what we do is we, we, we try to go by the Bible and we go, you know what? This ain't working. This is not working. I read my Bible the last three days and it didn't work. I, and I prayed before and after. And this isn't working, Joe. And part of the reason is this. We live in a world where we, we have no patience and no long suffering. How many of you know that? And if you think about this world that we live in right now, it's, it's absolutely built on um, something that, well, there's no such thing as delayed gratification anymore. Right? I was thinking about this. We got fast food. You can get brains, outpatient brain surgery. Some of you get impatient waiting on your microwave. How many of you can, re- I'm old enough, how many of you are old enough to remember the life without the microwave? That's a terrible life, wasn't it? Let's just be honest. I remember when they invented the things. And the first one that I had, we stuck something metal in there and watched it glow and do all that. Anybody do that? That was cool. Anyways, I digress. If you can, I mean, I, I remember not too long ago, we had one of those microwaves that you got to hang up under your stove and it went out. And those are a pain because then you got to, I don't, I don't even know what tools are, but I know you got to use them. Anyways, it went out and I didn't have a, I, we didn't have a microwave. You know how hard and difficult your life is without a microwave when you can't defrost anything? That was a terrible life before, wasn't it? Come on, just be honest. But some of you pace at the microwave. That's how, how out of patience you are. So that's the world we live in. And if Paul is going to offer encouragement to us. Now listen, some of you are sitting there going, well, you know what, I did this, Joe. I put my hand in the life bucket and I, tried, and I put some seeds and, and I'm, I'm not, it didn't work. Look what he says, verse 9. Love this. And let us not grow weary of doing good. Now listen, for in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Let me pause right there. You say, what? Joe, I've been loving my spouse. I've been, you know, I've been very understanding and things aren't getting fixed. They're still broke. Right? I, I, I disciplined my kids and they're still not obeying. Right? I work hard on my job. And I didn't get the promotion. This isn't working. I get up every morning at 6, 10, and I read the Bible. And nothing seems to be going right. It's not working. Paul says this. Now listen. Do not grow weary in doing good. Now, depending on your version, it means the same thing. But he says, for at, now listen. What's he saying? At? Depending on your version, says the, the proper time in due season. We'll reap a harvest. And here's the qualifier. You ready? If we don't give up. Right? So, in other words, if you don't give up, people who give up, they never see a harvest. Are you, are you following me? It's like a farmer who says, you know what? I really... I, 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 I really like this. Um, they, they go to Walmart and they buy a package of corn and it, there's a picture of the corn on there and they go, I'd, I'd really like to have some corn right now. And they go and they look at the, and they open up the package and they see the seeds. And they look at the seed and they go, you know, this is going to be hard. It's 90 degrees outside. I'm going to have to, that ground's like, anybody recognize, the ground's like concrete right now, isn't it? Don't fall on that thing. I'm going to have to plow up that hard ground. I'm going to, then I'm going to have to bend down. and I'm going to have to sow. And that's hard. Then I'll have to water it. My goodness. This is, this is going to, then it's going to take a while. And if it's an apple seed, it's going to, it's going to have to be a tree and then fruit. And then he finally says, the farmer says, ah, just forget it. I'm not going to do that. And what God's saying is this, is that guy right there never gets any fruit. He never eats any fruit. 
right? And uh, he's got zero shot of eating any of it. Here's the promise. You ready? The promise, and, and we got to cling to this promise. Listen to me. Some of you need to hear this. He says, in due season, at the proper time. And here's the question. When is the proper time? When, when, when is it? Um, and and the question, that question is, well, how do, we'd all like to know that. When's the proper time, right? Okay, I'm going to have to do this, God, till when? How long do I got to sow seeds? How long? Here's the deal. We all want a conclusion to the matter that we're thinking because here's what we want. We want to see change. Like we want to see change in our life. And what God is doing is he's telling us right here to trust him and you just keep going. Right? You just keep going because what God is less concerned about the fruit and he's more concerned about making you into his image. Right? And so what, what we want to do is we just want the world to change. We want everything around us to change, but we don't want to do no changing. And what God wants to do is says, I'll tell you what, before anything else changes, I'm going to change you. Right? I'm going to change you, and the way I'm going to change you is I'm going to tell you to trust me. I'm going to tell you don't be deceived, don't mock me, and just keep going. And we're like, well, wait a minute, God, I don't see the end. I can't see the end. And he says, you'll never see the end. Just keep going. And at the proper time, there will be a harvest. Listen, he doesn't even promise us that it'll be in our lifetime that we'll see the harvest. You got to hear this. Some of us are sowing seed today that won't bear fruit till your grandkids or your great-grandkids. How many of you in here, um, someone else sowed a seed in your life and they're gone? You get to see it, but they didn't. Right? How many of you, that's you? Maybe they're pray they prayed for you, but now they're gone. Or maybe they told you about Jesus and now they're God. Uh, they're gone. See, people who get weary, they just give up. And what Paul's saying here, it may not work today, but there'll be a harvest. Now listen to me. I'm going to apply this to our lives. Anybody here have a wayward kid? See, I, I raised them right. I taught them the truths of God's word. And it ain't, it, it ain't doing like it's supposed to. Read this. In the proper time, you may not see it. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Don't grow weary, the Bible says, in doing good. What's our motivation in doing good? Look here. Keep reading. No, I got I to gotta be done. Let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, we'll reap if we do not give up. And he says in verse 10, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good. And what he's saying here is look for opportunities to do good. And, and you know what the motivation is? And I know sometimes as Christians, because if you've been saved for a long time, you forget this. God did good to you and you didn't deserve it. That's our motivation because God has blessed us and given us. That's what grace is all about. You don't deserve it. It's unmerited favor. But God gave it to us and we're to turn around, y'all, and give it to other people. And he says here, he says here and he qualifies, he says, especially in the church, in the household of God, right? Pay, pay special attention to those in the church. That may mean restoring a broken brother. Right? It could mean uh, bearing a burden. We talked about that last week. Paying a bill, tutoring a struggling kid. But what we do is we work for the good. And we don't give up. So let me, let me just end it like this. So where's your heart today? 
Let me ask you, what bucket, what bucket, what bucket are you sticking your hand in? What bucket are you sowing? Please don't be deceived. If it's over here in the flesh, it's going to come due. There's going to be a harvest. There's always is. And he says, you got a choice. See, some of us in here, we've been, we've been putting our hand in the flesh bucket. You know, we're just, and we say, well, there's no, there's no effect. It, it doesn't matter. I can just keep doing all this stuff I'm doing. God doesn't care. And he, here's what you need to do. If that's you today, listen to me. You need to repent, right? You need to say, God, I'm wrong. And I realize that. And I realize that that will lead to death. And I don't need that, God. And, and we need to come to him and we, we need to thank him for what he's done. That he lived the perfect life, he died the death, and he rose again. And he did that, y'all, to forgive us, to cleanse us, to heal us, to renew us, to transform us, to adopt us, and to bring us into his family. So let me ask you right now. Where are your priorities? What, what are you sowing in your life? It matters. And if you are and you're growing weary this morning, I just the encouragement is this. The encouragement is this. As a Christian, don't give up. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning and I thank you that you're here. I thank you for your word. That's powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, Lord, and it, it, it pierces us. And it, and it, divides, uh, it divides us, Lord, and it, it, it judges the intentions and the desires of our heart. So this morning, I pray that your spirit would work in here. Lord, if there's folks in here, maybe there's stuff they just need to get with you and repent of. And, and, and Lord, they... They've been rationalizing it and, or whatever else, God, making excuses for themselves. And Lord, right now they see it. And you put your finger on that place and Lord, we just need to repent of it and confess it and go on. Lord, whatever needs to happen in here, if there's someone here that needs to, maybe they, they need to make a decision public. Maybe they've asked you in their life and they've never told anybody and today's the day they need to come and share maybe they need to join this church lord um maybe they need to be baptized something public lord we just pray that uh you'd give them the strength to do that for all the others lord that are christians here that i pray for you to encourage them right now not to give up and so we ask this in your name amen so i'm gonna ask you if you would to stand with me we come to this invitation time. We just give you an opportunity to respond. If you want to come and pray at the altar, it's open. If you'd like to uh, talk to a deacon or have someone pray with you, we'd love to do that. Whatever you need to do in the next couple minutes, we give this, just talk to the Lord. So as, as uh, the band plays, you do what God's leading you to do. Hide me Under your wings Cover me Within your mighty hand When the oceans rise and thunders roar I will soar with storm Father you are king over the flood I will be still know you are God Fire red In Christ alone, know His power in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and thunders roar. Oh
still know you are God. I will be still know you are God. Oh, I will be still and know you are God. Hey, have a quick seat. Jim, come on up here. Y'all, this is uh, Jim Brown, and um, he's not the running back. Um, <laughs> I think he played for Cleveland, was that right? I get kidded about that. That's okay. right. James Brown. James, or James Brown, too, right? That's right. You're not James Brown, the singer, neither, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So I'm it, a player, too. That's right. I get kidded all the time. That's right. Well, uh, Jim's coming today. He ha we've talked in the past. He has, he's been saved, and he's, he has been baptized by immersion. Um, and so uh, he's coming today, and he wants to join our church, and, and we've talked a little bit about it, and there, we'll have a class in the future, and, and uh, Jim's going to take that class, and, and, you know, some of you may need to do that as well. Maybe you're thinking about joining the church, and you've been saved and maybe baptized, or maybe you need to be baptized, and you've already been saved, and you would like to uh, become a member. Uh, we're going to be holding a class in, in, in uh, a little while, and, and uh so you can find out all about First Baptist Church and what we believe and all that. And so Jim's going to take that class, but he's coming today to tell you that he wants to become a member of First Baptist. Yeah. So we're excited about that. Yeah. So, all right. All right, so I'll have Steve come and stand with him. Uh, actually, you can't because you've got to pray. So I, I'm going to have Jim. Jim, come here. You and Peck stand by Jim. Jim, stand by Jim, and Peck, stand by Jim. That's two of the best looking guys in the church right here. <laughs> All right. So here's what I want you to do. In just a minute, if you would come by and, and give, tell Jim you're excited for him about his decision to want to come and be a part of First Baptist Church, okay? Um, Steve's going to close us out. Steve's our deacon of the week. And uh, so he's going to close us in a closing word of prayer. Y'all have a great day. Next week, if you want to read ahead a little bit, we're going to... We're going to uh, take the Lord's Supper. We only do that about four times a year, so we're going to do it next week. And uh, if you want to read a little bit, you can read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, kind of the very end of that kind of goes into the Lord's Supper. If you want to just kind of prepare yourself for the Lord's Supper next week as we take that in both services. So God bless you. Have a great day. Would you stand with me as Steve closes us out? Father, we just come to you today thankful for your word. We're thankful that we can stand in your truth, Lord, for your mercy and for your grace and your love. We're thankful that your word says that your mercies are, are new every day, Lord. We find peace and comfort in that. Father, I pray for VB Hess coming this week, for the children, for their families, and for the teachers, Lord. I ask that you be with them. I pray for those who are going through loss in this church and for sickness in this church and I also pray for your peace with them. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do. In your name we pray. Amen.